Hello. Um, great way to debunk and stick to the traditional uh, storyline. All the better. Small problem is uh, your very first phrase comes out of the video. You've infested this website like the way cockroaches infest a house. Um, trying to suggest that there are uh, right off the bat uh, that is an argument is something of an ad hominem attack. Um, again, or more specifically, the idea of compare well comparing them to a cockroach might be a little bit of a ad hominem attack there, which could weaken the position just a little bit. But anyway, here's some interesting data, which I think would be uh, which is worth considering on this issue. There need not even be the whole idea of the uh, of the controlled demolition or or the conspiracy theories that a bulk of people have suggested for one simple fact. CBC is the fifth estate, uh, the fifth estate, a program on Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, which is a it's a perfectly mainstream media source. Went and looked into the background history of the Bush family, the Bin La and the Bin Laden family. Also, uh, Figaro, a pro-U.S. Italian newspaper, published some information pertaining that was leaked from French intelligence. So there are two aspects to this which are uh, very interesting. One of which is that the, is the fact that the um, is that the Bushes and the Bin Ladens have had business contacts for somewhat for years. This is well documented throughout history. Um, what's interesting is that there is also public record to show that the Bin Laden family were flown out of the country shortly after the 9-11 attacks. The FBI's public statement was that, there, that they had uh, interviewed the Bin Laden family and it, was, and it turned out uh, they had determined that the family did not know where Osama was and therefore were of no further help. Only two days later, I find that a little, uh, I figure that, you know, um, they, the, the Bin Laden family would have wanted to have helped, i.e. said where Osama might normally have gotten his funds from, you know, uh, again, other useful stuff like that. But I digress. The um, other interesting piece, which is the figure of the right wing, um, French intelligence had picked up, uh, and, th and this is the only other piece of information, uh, well, again, one of the other pieces of information. Um, Apparent, uh, French intelligence had found that a CIA operative had gone and visited Osama in Dubai where he was receiving medical treatment roughly five months before the terrorist attacks happened. Um, so there is some interesting data there. And another interesting thing is the fact that um, less than two blocks away, not that it's major of any coincidence, but George Bush Sr. was actually meeting with the Bin Ladens that very day. Conspiracy theory? Again, that's anybody's guess. But Again, and mind you, this is pure speculation on my part. And uh, again, uh, you know, again, this is just based on the data that I've uh, looked at. And um, you wouldn't even need the idea of a twin tower usage or something like that. But there is something that you might want. There is something interesting to take a look at. The um, the president is also uh, it w is also uh, has also known to have friends in various places like Enron and uh, other multinational corporations. Now, if memory serves, at about the time that the September 11th attacks happened, there was a big scandal going on at around Enron right then, and uh, you know, and of course, and stuff like that. Now, the thing is that if you are in charge of a corporate elite, and if you are uh, one who has contacts to terrorists, uh, you know, through family, familial connections, wouldn't it make sense? Um, and here's a little, uh, okay, this is a little bit of a conspiracy far-fetched, but I'll, I'll explain my idea in a second. Um, basically, here's my suspicion, and I'll, I'll elaborate why in a second. Uh, again, this is just purely speculation on my part, and I have no idea if this is actually the case. But here's the thing. Suppose, say, for example, Enron was having a scandal, and Bush didn't want to find it, you know, uh, even if there are ties or not, you know, he didn't, uh, he wouldn't want any bad press which might affect his friends or, you know, or, or any of his, you know, his backers or what have you. So Bush uh, goes through the family contacts, or Bush's family goes through the family contacts with the Bin Ladens, locates Osama, sends a CIA operative over who, um, uh, you know, again, is completely only part, you know, on the payroll or, you know, is completely even unaware of what's going on. And, um, you know, maybe it's a general official order or something like that, you know, for, for some other reason and the CIA officer has been duped. Who knows? He goes and asks Osama, um, you know, will you send a couple of terrorists to bomb the Twin Towers, use religion as an excuse, what have you. And then Osama bin Laden uses the Al-Qaeda approach and says, uh, you know, um, you know, the infidels have done something, uh, you know, blow up the towers. 
and a couple of suicide bombers who genuinely, because of their own uh, misinterpreted religion, don't know any better or don't know of uh, bin Laden's former contacts with the Bush family or with the U.S. or what have you, um, you know, the, the, the terrorists, completely unaware, actually take hostages of four planes and bomb people. Now, the worst part is, though, is that, um, now here's the thing. Um, you know, again, I consider it incompetence on the, on the part of, uh, you know, if the FBI made the public statement that, they, you know, and they didn't really have a chance to, invent, to uh, interview the bin Ladens, you know, they only had like a couple of days or what have you, or, you know, not even really that long to go through like, you know, 10, 15 people, you know, and give full lengthy interrogations to find out where people actually, you know, if there might be even the slightest connection which could help out about bin Laden. I either point to that as incompetence on the part of the FBI, or um, if it was actually that they were, uh, Bush was trying to constantly hurry it up, I would call that obstruction of justice. Again, even if he had nothing to do with it, that would be, you know, considered on that part, because maybe the bin Laden family might have some possibility of helping out the you know, that might have been having a help out uh, find Bin Laden. But, I mean, what have we done now? We've bombed Afghanistan. We're still occupying it. And Bin Laden, apparently, every so often we hear on the news, keeps sending tapes back. I mean, you know, we haven't found the guy. So, you know, okay, anyway, I digress. But um, I'd uh, here's the other point about, um, about uh, stuff. As you are well aware, of course, um, you know, our current economic system, uh, one's, uh, I mean, I think there's been, pl there, again, there's been plenty of evidence before that various corporations such as Walmart or, or other people like that, uh, again, have no qualms, uh, or rephrase that, can't use their political power, uh, apparently can't use their buying power to influence, can't or won't in, uh, use their buying power to influence governments to um, uh, improve the labor laws, particularly in China, um, and are quite willing to allow the, the nationalities to use sweatshops. As a matter of fact, Penn and Teller bullshit confirmed this. And they said, well, sweatshops are bad, but compared to what? Tilly go to the soil all day with Uncle's femur? Which, uh, well, I mean, sure. But that's called pointing to another wrong fallacy. Anyway, I think that my bot. I, I, so the thing, of course, is though, is that if if the uh, if very if certain corporations, particularly those in Halliburton, are um, are not, you know, are are not don't feel too guilty about um, about the million about thousands or millions of people dying due to an economic disparity in the third world. Why? What would be a couple more thousand deaths to them? You know, it makes you know to somebody like that. As long as it's nobody they know, it's quite li you know it wouldn't make that much difference to them. Bush would probably be the only one who would have any uh, qualms about it, him being the president. Um, you know, so that that's one of the ones right there. And the other thing which I find interesting was the expediency and the and the, the quickness at which they had the Patriot Act all thought out, ready and ready to bring before the Congress, who, by the way, were so incompetent that they didn't actually read the document before signing it. You know that they were, um, you know, they were so quick to have it ready to uh, bring it forward um, to suppress this terrorist threat. Now, I'd like to um, bring out a couple of things, and why, uh, again, uh, one of the reasons why I suggest that there might be uh, something a tad more sinister going on, and possibly even a dictatorship. Again, pure speculation. In Canada, we have only had one possible case, uh, we have only had one case that made the news of a near terrorist attack, and that was caught through good old-fashioned police work, thus proving at least it's unnecessary for the, uh, you know, for the wiretaps and stuff like that. Like, you know, half the time they just check the chat rooms or stuff like that like you know chat rooms are a public domain they're not even necessary you know they got warrants for everything they did they needed like it was unnecessary for the for the security legislation that Canada opposes the watered down version does the US actually need this stuff and the fact that they brought it out so quickly um, you know combined with the fact and there's another uh, thing as well about which this suggests that the uh, that the government is currently using the war in Iraq and other stuff as misdirects um, Bush made claims, uh, a positive claim that uh, that Osama, that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and links to Al Qaeda. After the invasion, there's been little to no evidence of that. They've not found a single weapon of mass destruction yet, and there was no evidence. Uh, you know, uh, Saddam. Uh, there's been plenty of historical evidence to suggest that uh, Saddam and Osama have been in each other's throats for decades. So why would the U.S. government lie to us about that? And why would uh, we? Why do we still need this terrorist legislation? Oh, here's the other thing. In the past five years. Uh, sec sorry, six, um, in the past uh, seven years since the 9-11 incidents, we've only had, what, three terrorist attacks in total? Do we actually need this stuff? Where's the evidence for it? That's my question.